I'm Paul McQuaid and welcome to Roaring Back. Now here we are in one of my favorite places on the entire planet, Queens, New York. Now Queens is the most diverse urban area in the entire world. So unsurprisingly, it has the second largest and most diversified economy in the entire city. Now, one neighborhood that's contributed greatly to that economy is Astoria. Originally named Hallett's Cove, after its first landowner, William Hallett, in 1652. It was later renamed Astoria after John Jacob Astor, who was then the wealthiest person in the country, in order to persuade him to invest in the neighborhood. So for $500, goodbye Hallett's Cove, hello Astoria. Now, I'm not sure if money can buy happiness, but it could certainly buy you some amazing naming rights back in the day and some amazing food today. So let's go check some of it out. Here in Astoria, there's a ton of amazing things to do. One of my personal new favorites is the Museum of the Moving Image. Additionally, right behind us is Kaufman Astoria Studios, where they filmed everything from Orange is the New Black to The Irishman, and the list goes on and on. When we're talking about food, you can't come to Queens without mentioning Greek. I happen to love the Taverna Kiklades, or a little bit more upscale, the Anasa Taverna. If you're with a huge group of friends and you want to go watch a soccer match with other hooligans, you go to the Bohemia Beer Garden, who has an amazing outdoor space and can accommodate huge groups. But me personally, I think I'm just in the mood for some fire margaritas and some of the best tacos in the neighborhood. My personal favorite happens to be Tacuba. So let's go check some out. Here we are at Tacuba, well, one of my favorite Mexican restaurants here in Astoria. And uh, always they have, honestly, their, uh, their uh, special drink of the month. This is La Sandia. Wow, unbelievable. Messi is good always, right? Um, but what this is, is um, it's very nice tequila, muddled watermelon, a little Saint Germain, uh, some uh, jalapeno and lime. So nice, refreshing, a little kick everything you're looking for in a margarita. And uh, it just feels so amazing, you know, whenever I'm back in Queens, some of you, you know, some of you know uh, in, the, in the trailer where I mentioned, where this is where, you know, in Queens, a little bit further east of here, Jackson Heights, Elmhurst, but, uh, you know, in Queens is where I spent the majority of my summers as a kid growing up, uh, visiting my Nana. And when you're, when you're the youngest, you get your grandma, right? Uh, you get your grandma as your favorite. It just always so, feels so just energizing whenever I'm back because I remember, you know, the people, and just the culture and the neighborhood um, and the feeling of community here um, is really, I find to be more palpable than any other neighbor, any other place in the city really. And some of the neighborhoods are so, so unique here and, and have developed over time where there is a Colombian neighborhood and a Chinese neighborhood and now they've had kids and now their kids are having kids and now there's all these just different mixes of enclaves of uh, different nationalities and backgrounds and heritages and traditions um, and seeing everything come together when you're in Queens is just, the best. Um, you're truly in like a microcosm of the globe here, um, which is why it's my favorite borough. Um, it's one of, you know, again, my favorite places to be on the planet. And I'm just so happy to be back always. So, salute. Oh, nice chunk of watermelon there. Oh, amazing. Not too spicy. Balanced so well. It's a little messy over here, but again, I'll take messy and delicious any day of the week, huh? Here in Queens, you know, um, during the virus, it was it was a little bit complicated. What did I really know um, how to navigate it? Because we, again, there was not really a big direction from our leaders as to how to navigate it and how you know how to operate. People, some people had trouble with it, uh, as always in an any neighborhood in, in uh, the city. Uh, but one place which we're going to go after this, uh, after I finish this delicious, amazing cocktail, let's go have another one. <laughs> Um, at, uh, at Mansion Supper Club. So Mansion, Sup Mansion Supper Club was not only a business that opened kind of right before COVID, but in my opinion happened to adapt really, really, really well. Uh, and they were able to come through and, and create a following um, as really a safe haven. The partner happens to be uh, one of my very, very good friends, Oscar Ortiz, um, who I used to work with and who I've known, um, I think since I was like 22. Um, and I'm not 22 anymore. Uh, <laughs> let's go check out Oscar, see what's going on at Mansion Supper Club. And who knows, I got my party shirt on, so uh, you never know, I might just have to stick around, see what's going on late night, you know? So, 
sitting down here now with Oscar Ortiz. So not only was I so impressed with the business here, Oscar here happens to be one of my oldest, closest friends uh, from uh, our old Heineken days. So Oscar, how are you? Good, man. Good. Good. And thank you. Thank you guys for being here. Um, you know, how did you become involved and how was it starting your own first business during COVID? We opened the business December 20th, mm -hmm. friends and family, nice. And uh, for December 24th, we had a, a big Christmas uh, Christmas party yeah, yeah. that was packed. So people started knowing the place. Uh, New Year's Eve, a party that was even better. So we were like yeah. right on the spot. Like, And then we start January. Thursday was already packed. Fridays, Saturdays, February, March. Oh, yeah. And... And that was tough because when you start a business and then you have all these ideas in your head to try to be better in your business and then something like COVID happens that just kill, killing us, kill yeah. everybody. Yeah, and, and, and I think that's a great point and, and segue to bring up. So, you know, from your original business plan to then where you guys had to adapt to, what did that transition look like? How did you make those decisions? Walk us through some of the meetings that you had with your team here as to go from a roaring amazing mm -hmm. a roaring amazing supper club place <coughs> that just opened that was i know you know the the highlight of the neighborhood um to having to um just adapt and to all the regulations without direction and all that so we start with these meetings like uh that was that was new for everybody so in march we still like quiet and then in april we start talking like okay what we want to do so we start with like zoom meetings that was the the, yeah. <laughs> the famous <laughs> So we start with these uh, Zoom meetings. Okay, guys, what we want to do? And then we start like, okay, we should start like doing some uh, deliveries first, and then we start doing this and then doing that. And then it was, the place was closed actually April, May, and June. Okay. And then we opened July 1st. So we came out with the idea that uh, you saw the, the garden outside. I have. The I, I never experienced it. So the patio, yeah. that was actually yeah. like our, our, that was the parking for us. Oh, that wow. That was the parking lot. And then, because all the regulations from the city that like we can use, if you have your own, your own open space, which is part of your, yep. of your, um, of your business, yeah, yeah. you can open it as a business. You have to send an email and then you have the permit in like 15 seconds, 15 minutes. So we start doing, we start sending the permits. We came here, we fixed the patio. The patio was horrible. Like oh, it yeah. was, that was old garbage in the back, like all tables, all chairs. Yeah. So yeah. all came out with, with ideas. We should like paint the walls. You should do this on the floor. You should do this, this and that. And then we start doing that. We start buying all the furniture that you, that you see outside. Mm -hmm. We start painting the floor, cleaning everything. And then we finished about, uh, that was like June 15. And then we start doing some like different things to try to improve a little bit more. Yep. And then, okay, so let's open this July 1st. And then that was a freaking hit. Listen, Oscar, always so amazing to see you, my old friend. Um, and just so amazing to see you thriving. Salud. Polito, my pleasure. And thank you, guys. Thank you so much. And so good to see you always, my friend. So good to see you thriving. Thank you. Another amazing afternoon here in Queens. We walk through Astoria, and whether it be restaurants, the film industry, or the nightlife, it's so, so great to see that not only Manhattan, but Brooklyn and Queens are roaring back. And to see a business go through not only COVID, but to be able to adapt and thrive through it, and it for it to be from one of your good friends, I mean, man, how amazing. So, when you come to New York, get a couple extra days, get into the other boroughs, Make sure you come to Mansion Supper Club. I know I'm gonna need an extra day of recovery, and I'll see you next time on Roaring Back.